job. He was so happy. And, and he was worshipping in one of the services. And as he was going back home, the car, he was just reaching his house. It was, on the, it was on the 30 highway, very close to his house. Just reaching his house, his little son came out from the back seat and he tried to come in the front. And, 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 and this, this friend of mine, his name is uh, Korean, Biju Korean. He looked, ba he looked back. And as he looked back, the leg was stuck and, and he tried to take out the leg, but the leg was still stuck inside and they hit the pavement. And after that, the car overturned, not once, not twice, three times. It turned over and, and he was flung out of the car through the window. And, and his two children were in the car and his wife was in the car and the car caught fire. And praise be to God, they all survived. The ambulance came there, picked up Bija Kurian and his family. The car was totally destroyed. God saved them. They took him to the hospital, Mubarak Kibir Hospital, and he was broken. His, his left arm was broken. His spine was broken, and his, he, had, he had no feeling beyond his, his legs. He was totally crushed. His wife had, lost, had, 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 had a broken jaw. His, his kids miraculously survived. No, nothing, nothing serious happened to them. But he was broken. He was broken beyond recognition sometime. I was there with him from morning to evening. In the evening, the doctor came, and then they, they poked a nail in his leg. And, and I, I heard the screams, and, and uh, they tried to stretch his leg straight forward. But, but he was in serious trouble. And after a few days, they had to, to take him to the, author, author, uh, to, the, to the bone hospital. They had to take him in the hospital in the ambulance. My point, my brother, sister, is that sometimes we are in a great mess not knowing why we are there. It happens to us. Sometimes it happens in families. Sometimes it happens in church. Sometimes it happens around us. Now, as James is, is going through this, you know, as he's writing to the church, this is a young church. It's, he's writing this book after 50 years of Jesus Christ. And and, and it was going through a mess. And let me read some of the things that they were going through. Number one, in James chapter 2, it says, My brothers and sisters, believers in, in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, must not show favoritism. Suppose a, young, suppose a man comes into a meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes also came in. If you show special attention to the man wearing special fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you. But to the poor man, you stand there, sit on the floor by the feet. Have you not discriminated among them, among yourself and, and become judges with evil thoughts? This was a church 50 years old, not 50 years old, just after 50 years. And they didn't know. They knew Christ. They knew who Christ was. They were born again. They believed they had a set of beliefs, but the deeds were not right. Something was wrong. In fact, it, it, it gets more messier. It gets more worse. If you, if you, if you read further, it says, you know, in, uh, in, verse, in, verse, in chapter 3, it gets worse because it, it, says, that, it says that in verse 9, with, tongue, with, the, with the tongue we praise our Lord and Father with it we curse human beings who have made who have been made in God's like, likeness. Out of the same mouth comes praises and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water from the same spring can, can come from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or grapevines bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. It got even worse. You know what happened among them, among them in verse 14, there was bitter, there was bitter envy and selfish and, and selfish ambition. It says in verse 14, but if you have, if you harbor bitter envy and selfish, selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from heaven, but it's earthly. In chapter 4, it gets even worse. It says there were fights taking place. It says, what causes fights and quarrels amongst you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You, you desire, but do not have. So you kill, you covet, but you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and you fight. You do not, 
you do not have because you do not ask. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives so that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. The church was in a mess in that time. It doesn't end over there. It also says they got a bit arrogant also. It says in, in verse 5, in, in chapter 5, the verse, uh, in, chapter, in chapter 5, verse 3, it says, Your gold and silver are corroded. Their, their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh. You have hoarded wealth in your last days. Look, the wages, even the people who are working for them, they were not, not getting paid. The wages you have failed to pay to the workers who mowed your fields and, your, and, crying, and, and are, crying again, are crying out against you. What happens, my brothers and sisters, is that we have to be honest to ourselves. We have to be honest to each other. And when we look at the law, and we, when you look at this law, this law is talking back to us. When you look at this book, this book is talking back to us. This is a mirror. I praise God that we are more than conquerors. I praise God that we are overcomers. You know, when it says you accept Jesus Christ as your, as your Savior, you're saved. Amen. That's praise God. That's true. It's by faith that you're saved. Amen. It is the faith that brings you to Christ. Not by faith alone. It's the faith that brings you to Christ. And when Christ is in you, that is when the good work begins inside of you. Amen. The whole point of, of, what, I'm trying to uh, of what I'm trying to share over here with you is that when my friend Biju was taken in that ambulance, it wasn't the ambulance that saved him. It was the physician in the hospital who took care of him. It's the physician who stood with him. After six months, he began to walk step by step. After six months, his hand began to move. It was a physician who worked on him for six months, seven months. By eighth month, he went back to Canada. You know, it is, it is the physician, the Lord Jesus Christ, who works in our lives. Amen. And it is he who is correcting us. It is he who is teaching us through the Holy Spirit. And if we are not careful, we will just be carrying a set of beliefs. And if you're not careful, yes, we might be, we might be doing the right thing. We, we come here, we praise the Lord, we worship the Lord, we pay our tithes and offering, we sing for the Lord God, but our hearts are not being changed. That is a real concern for all of us. It's a real concern for me. It's a real concern for the day when we see the Lord, when we see the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The church was in trouble. My friend was in trouble. But when the physician appears, when the Lord Jesus appears, when he puts his hand upon you, he begins to refine you. He, beg he begins to define you. He begins to change you from within. The ultimate purpose of the church, the ultimate purpose of us all together is to glorify Jesus Christ in our life. That when people see us, they see Christ in us. When they see us in the worship team over here, when they see, when they see the people in your workplaces, they should, they should be able to see Christ amongst us. What is causing the quarrels? What is causing the things? Selfish ambition. My way, our way, our agenda, my way, in husband and wife, my, my choice. This is right, that's wrong. My brothers and sisters, let, let Christ be glorified. There is one law which says over here, which is going to change our life. Are you ready to hear that law? It says in chapter, in chapter 2, verse 8, If you really keep the royal law found in the scripture, love your neighbor as you love yourself. You are doing right. If you love, we all love God. Amen? Amen? You want God to thunder again? We all love God. Amen? It's easy to love God because, you know, he, we don't see him. He, he talks to us through the word. It's easy for him because when you, when you listen to his word of God and we, we listen to it and we, know, we, we hear about his character, and it's, it's easy to fall in love with him. It's easy to fall in love, love with Christ. But your neighbor is a problem. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> but our neighbor is the problem. Our Closed people are our problem. Our workers are our problem. Our co-workers are our problem. And the answer to that is love. And, and the answer to that is love. It was when Jesus taught his people 
to pray for those who persecute you, he did it on the cross. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. They were persecuting him. They, were, they, 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 they beat him. They put the crown on his head and said, Father, forgive them. It was his love. My brothers and sisters, this love is inside of you through the Holy Spirit. This love of Christ is invested inside of you. The same Holy Spirit that, resur that resurrected Jesus Christ is inside of you. It's about time this love begins to flow out of you. Amen? Amen? You know, you've got to surprise yourself. You've got to shock yourself. When, when you're supposed to get angry, there is love flowing out of you. When you're supposed to get upset, there is love flowing out of you. When you're supposed to get, get, take some revenge, get even, there is love flowing out of you. My brothers and sisters, this, this is Christ in us. Nothing else. This is Christ in us. The love of Christ is on your face. It's not, it's not by your talk. It's not by a walk. It's by who you are in Christ. Amen? When this love begins to overflow, when this love begins to come out of you, people will not need to hear your message. You are the message. When you walk with this kind of humbleness, when you, kind, when you, when you, when you humble yourself, and, and, and God is going to lift you up. It's not easy to give the other cheek. It's not easy, but when you try and give, you will see God is going to lift you up. When you have fallen and there's no one around you, God will send his angels to lift you up. My brothers and sisters, it's, it's only the love of Christ that is supposed to overflow from our life. And, these, and, and in James, we, we see all this thing taking place. When you come to Christ with an open heart, when you come to Christ and say, Lord, forgive me. Help me, train me, guide me, teach me. He will answer you. He will answer you. You see, we are born again. Praise God. We are born for heaven. Praise God. But even today, we have caves inside of us. We have some, some areas inside of us that need to be rectified. That need to be changed. And if we do not address it, if we do not look at it, if we do not talk to it, and if we do not, even it says over here, talk and it says that you should confess your sins to your, to your neighbors, or confess your sins to your loved ones, if two or three. That's why I suggest, brothers and sisters, you know, we got to get in the, in the cell groups. We got to get, get into fellowships. We got to get together and share with each other. We got to understand that God loves us. And when we pray for each other, and when you see God's love changing you, you can testify for his glory. Amen. We need to deal with this to mature in Christ. We cannot be the same. We have to change from yesterday to tomorrow to today to tomorrow. Keep changing. Only God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But we got to keep changing for His glory. Amen. We have to keep changing. That you will go through tests, you will go through trials, but you know, be of good cheer, for I will overcome them through you. He will overcome them through you. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. When we practice this, we are glorifying Jesus Christ in our life. When we allow, when we see the, when we see rich and poor, and we don't differentiate, and when we, and when we love them equally, and we, 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 we look at them and say, wow, what a creation of God they are, all of them. We are glorifying Jesus Christ in our life. When it's not my ambition, but, but God's ambition in my life has to become, it's not my will, but your will be done. He will be glorified in our life. But as we, as we walk on this road, there will be challenges. As we go through this test, trials and tribulations, there will be, ch there will be challenges. And there were a lot of challenges over here. James is being very straightforward to the people and, and talking to us straightforward. In fact, I thank God for the straightforward five chapters which speaks directly into our hearts and it's, 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 it's kind of crushing us from within. Oh Lord, is that me? Oh Lord, is that me? I'm so, it's so powerful. Amen. And sometimes, you know, to, to grow... We have to go through some pain. As we decrease, as we humble ourselves, as we glorify God together. That's why even in this time, like to, and we saw this, this prayer of reconciliation that is going to take place on Tuesday also. It is going to help our body. It is going to help us all. 
to come together, become one in Christ, as we humble ourselves, as we become in one accord, as we let go of the past, as we let go of the old things, as we let go of my ambition, my agenda, my plan, as we let go, say, Lord, only you be glorified in this church. How many agree that we will see signs, miracles, wonders? How many agree that we will see many new lives coming into the Lord Jesus Christ? How many agree that God will be glorified in this land? Amen. All it takes is to humble ourselves. My brothers and sisters, even my, my, my best topic is my congregation. You know which is my congregation? Samantha and my kids. That's my first congregation. The more we talk, the more we spend time with each other, the more we humble ourselves between each other, more God is going to be glorified. Otherwise, I can stand here and I can preach and teach. I know I'm being a hypocrite. My brothers and sisters, we got to get things right in our life if you want to mature in Christ. we got to get th things right in our life if you want to mature in Christ. Yes, I mean, I'm telling you, I'm not saying I, I have no one to judge you. You're going to miss it. No, 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 no. God's, God's graceful. God's merciful. God is wonderful. God has his own plans. But if when, when, when the word of God comes to us directly and speak, it's speaking directly into our life, it's about time that we open up our hearts, open up our minds and say, yes, Lord. I need a change in my life. I want to mature up in Christ. With the tongue, in chapter 3, verse 9, with the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, with the, and, and if we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness, out of the same mouth comes, comes praise and cursing. Just think about it. We have just worshipped the Lord God with all our heart, with all our mind. Imagine, it's so clear that we cannot even speak one thing bad or slander another bro uh, brother or sister. With the same mouth, can there be sweet water and bitter water coming out from the same place? Can, we, can that happen? Our, our, our example is our Christ. On that cross... I mean, Easter is just... Good Friday is just not only for us to just remember once. It is a lifestyle for us. What he did on the cross, we can do on this earth. We'll carry the cross. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they do. Today you will be with me in paradise. The same thief who was cursing him, the same thief who was, who was, making, who was mocking him, as he had a change of heart, he promised him, today you will be with me in paradise. Today we can forgive anyone who has, who has hurt you. Today we can let go of the past. Today we can let go and become new in Christ. Amen. On that cross, when he was being broken and beaten, even at that moment he had a love for his mother that he said, please take John, take my mother. You know, even that in the most painful situation, what was existing at that moment? The love of God in his life. The love of God himself. That is who we are. That is our DNA. That is what we are made for. We were, we were born, you we made to love God with all our heart and love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Amen. How many of you love yourself? Come on, be honest. We all love ourselves. <laughs> we all love ourselves. Come on, you dressed up and wow, you look nice and you know, you walk nice, look nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you got to love the other person exactly the same way. I tell you, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, this is the miracle that's taking place in your life now. I confess it. You've got to confess. Yes, Lord. It's taking place. I mean, there's got to be so much of love overflowing out of you. Not that fake love. Hello, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say, blah, blah, blah. No, no, the real one. The real thing. The real thing. The real deal. I love you, brother. I love you, sister. Because God loved me. He forgave me. He, I will not allow my tongue, I will not allow my mind, I will not allow my heart to have any bitterness, I will not have my, allow my, my, my being to go through any pain. I will love you as God has loved me. As he has forgiven me. How many times have you been forgiven? How many times? Seven times seven? Seven times seven? One million times? I believe I've been forgiven from, from the time I was born. <laughs> All of us have fallen short. All of us have gone the wrong, all of us have gone astray. But He, in His in His great might and power and His grace, has accepted us the way we are. Amen. How much more the Church of Christ is supposed to mature in Christ and become like Him? 
Love those who persecute you. Bless those who, who curse you. Someone wants your shirt, give him your jacket. Someone wants, someone is filing a case on you, don't worry, God will fight my case. Someone is saying, so, you know, this, but don't allow your tongue. Don't allow your tongue to, to become a tool for the enemy. Don't allow your heart to, to have any room you know, for, for the enemy to, to toy around with you. The same tongue will only glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? There is two kinds of wisdom. It says in, in uh, chapter 3, verse 13, Who is wise in understanding among you? Let them show it in their good life. By deeds done in humility. By deeds done in humility. That comes from wisdom. Whatever you do. Whatever you do. Even the smallest thing. Even a glass of water that you give. Is recognized by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Whatever you do. You do it in humbleness. Then let's look at the deeds. In verse 2, chapter 2 verse 14 it says. What is good? My brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds, he has faith but he has no deeds, can such, save, can such faith save them? Someone comes to you, yes, yes, someone comes to you, brother, sister, I'm without food, hungry, inshallah, God will provide. Huh? No, 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 we are people with deeds. We, if faith without action is of no use. In verse, in verse 17, it says, In the same way, faith by itself, it is, if it's not accom accompanied by, by action, it is dead. In the same way, faith by itself, if it's not accompanied by action, it is dead. If we have great faith, I can move mountains. When I pray, brother, the mountains shake. When I pray, brother, this, no, 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 no. If you can all that faith, but if you have no love, you have nothing. Brother, I can move. Brother, you can't even move mustard seed. Forget the mountains. Brother, brother, I, I, I can prophesy. All that will cease. If you have no faith, I mean, if you have no love, you're like a clanging signal. Tongue, tongue, tongue. You get a headache. But faith with action is what God is looking for. In verse 20, he says, You foolish, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? In verse 26 it says, As a body without spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Faith without deeds is dead. The only deed that you need to provide and to do is love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Is it easy? Is it challenging? Is it possible? Amen. Is it hard? Definitely. But with Christ's love inside of us, as we count all that we have been through, as we counted joy, as he endured the cross for you and for me, so can we endure the cross for someone else. Amen? Our, we have to have deeds. A tree without fruits is nothing. We have lots of trees in Kuwait. Lots of trees. The only one, the only thing you find is dates. Dates, sweet. Don't eat a lot to get sugar, right? You know? You know, but when you go to a fertile land, I was, in, I was in Cyprus. I would take, if you take a seed and just put some water on it, a tree would come out and fruits everywhere. You mean you could walk on the street and you could see, you could see oranges, you could see apples, you could see mangoes, you could see grapes. It was fruits everywhere. And that's how Christians are supposed to be. Lots of fruits in them. Ah, ha, 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 ha. There it comes, there it comes. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Lots of fruits in them. And when you get pressed, and when you go through difficult time, sweetness is coming out of you. Ah, 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 ah. Don't make, I mean, people will get so used to, you know, getting, putting you in trouble, only sweetness is coming out. <laughs> Don't worry. No, no. But that's how a Christian is supposed to be. That's mature in Christ. We can say things fast to hurt someone. We can say things fast, you know, in our anger. But, you know, it says be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. If we exercise that in our life, we are maturing in Christ. Love, joy, peace, kindness, mercy, endurance. Let it flow. 
in our life. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I tell you, I tell you, we can do it. We can do it. I, I can testify as I went into the hospital room to see my friend Biju lying on the bed, six months. He was on that bed, could not move. But not once in his painful time did he ever say, God, why did you do this to me? God, why did you put me through this? He would always say, God is good. God is good. He could not move his hands. He could not move his arms. He, I used to go to his room every day in the night to be encouraged by him rather than encouraging him. That's how, I tell you, in your brokenness also, you can be a source of encouragement to someone else. And when this man, Biju, after going through all that accident, he got up and he began to walk step by step, step by step. And as we get up from whatever situation you're in today, whatever pain you're going through today, whatever we, you've been through, and as you get up and say, Lord, help me, yeah, Lord, help me, I tell you, Biju began to walk and he came back to the church and he sang the song, Blessed is he, uh, what is that? Blessed is your name. He sang that song. And I tell you, there were tears in people's eyes. And there was so much joy. Our God is a faithful God. He, our God is a God of restoration. Our God is a God who repairs us. Our God is a God who, re, who reconstructs us. Who makes us new. And today he's in, he's in, uh, in Canada. We started a church, a satsang church over there. And he's faithfully going there and, and serving the Lord, my, um, our God. My brothers and sisters, we have to mature in Christ. It's not an option. Maturity will come through prayers. Maturity will come by going through the word of God. Maturity will come in praise and worship. Maturity will come not only by hearing the word of God, by doing the word of God also. Maturity will come when we, when we deny ourselves, carry the cross and follow his commands. As we continue on this, on this path, as we go through this, as whatever situation you're in, I'm telling you, not all of you are going through a bad situation, but whatever situation, in good, praise the Lord. In worse, praise the Lord. In best, praise the Lord God. If that becomes our lifestyle, if that becomes, if that becomes our, our way of life, I tell you, this place and all the services are going to be filled. Are going to be, they will ask you, where are you going? What's, what, what's with you? Why are you always so happy? I mean... We know all the trouble, but you've you got the smile on your face. You've got the joy that's, that's, that's contagious. You know, what's, what's this with you? You know, what's happening? And then you can say, come to a place. Come to a place where you can rest in the Lord. Come and hear the word. Come and you will see because of your life, by few things. Like you want small testimony and, and I'll, I'll end with that. Uh, in, in 1993, when I came to the church for the first time, I was, a, I was an angry young man. Always angry, you know, angry, 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 you know. And then I met Sister Susan. <laughs> and then she prayed over me and then she said, God's going to use you. I said, praise God. And that time almost a song started in my heart, a song, a song. How many of you have songs going on in your heart all the while, all the while? There's the, the God's FM radio inside all of you. You know, there's a song going on all the while, happy, happy, no matter, no matter what happens. There's, there's joy, there's a, joy of, uh, a song of joy, a song of praise, a song of worship. It's going on. And, and, and I was singing and I was going and I had a secretary at that time. Her name was Maria. And Maria asked me, Deepak, what's wrong with you? I said, why? Why are you singing? You, don't, you should not be singing. I've never seen you singing. I said, you know what? I went to this church and there's joy in that place. And there's, she said, she said can, can you take me there? I said, why not? Why not? It was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I remember so clearly. 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And, and we came to church. And Pastor Jerry was sleeping that time. Pastor Jerry was <sighs> sleeping. I knocked on his door. Tuck, tuck. Pastor Jerry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Deepak. What's it? Pastor Jerry, there's someone over here who wants to meet Christ. Yeah, no problem. He, he was joyful also. <laughs> He got from sleep and he came out and, and, and Maria and Pastor Jerry spent, spent about half an hour praying and 45 minutes. And Maria got the joy also. And she was born again also. All work, all, I didn't do anything. I didn't evangelize. I didn't speak to any verses. I didn't take her through, through the Romans route. All I did was just sing a song. My brothers and sisters, your life is a testimony for God. Your life can change many people's lives. Your life is maturing in Christ. Amen. 
So today, before we, we come to the table, you know, as, as my brother prepares the table, before you come to the table, we've got to, we've got to have a, a really honest conversation with God. I'll ask the worship team to come front, please. The worship team. We've got to have honest conversation with God. I want to mature in Christ day by day. Amen. How many of you want to mature in Christ every day? And we've got to, and we've got to take this time. And before we come to the table, you know, before we come to the table, speak to the Lord God. There are areas in our life, there are areas in our life which are still, the doors are locked. Where we haven't given access to our Lord God. Say, so Lord, later, later. There are areas in our life which we have not have controlled over as yet. It could be anger, it could be unforgiveness, it could be some area of our life in which we have not given full access to God. Before we come to the communion table today, take a few minutes. Let's have an honest conversation with our Lord through the Holy Spirit. Let's talk to Him. Say, Lord, I've, I've heard many things in James today. Lord, there are some things I need to talk to you about, I need to tell you about. Lord, this heart of mine, this, there are things inside of me that needs to, to go. I need to let go. And when you have this honest conversation with the Lord, He has said, come, sit down with me, let's reason together. Let's reason together. Even if your sins are like scarlet, I will wash them. I will make you as white as snow. He's a God who keeps his word. He's a God who answers us. He helps us in our weaknesses. Take a few minutes and, and speak to him. Take a few minutes and speak to him. Just a few minutes. As we humble ourselves before him, he's a God who's going to answer us. As we come before him and say, Lord, help me. I need you more. He will talk to us. He will guide us. He will lead us. My brothers and sisters, it will just take us. One day our knee will bow before him. Why don't we just bow down before him right now? And tell him, Lord, I come before you.